Hey there guys, welcome back. Today I want to give you a tour of my rolling workbench that you see just behind me. It's been the source of a ton of questions and comments and can be seen in nearly every one of my build videos. I made it with basic materials and simple joinery and it's pretty much a project that I think anybody can accomplish. Um, it's not fine woodworking by any means, um, but it is sturdy, practical, and it works for me. I've incorporated a few special features that I'll show you at the end, but overall, I hope it gives you some ideas maybe for your own workbench build and, uh, or any other similar project. So I'll start out, I'll give you a quick little walk around, I'll talk about some of the build details, and then I will show you some of the special features like how the saw fits in the table and uh, some little leafs uh, that come out to uh, you know, do some extra things. So hold on one second and uh, we'll get to the tour. So to start the tour off, I'll first give you the dimensions of the bench and the basic materials I used to build it. The top you're gonna see is three feet wide and five foot long. Out of that one sheet of plywood, I used my leftovers to make the bottom section that you see down there. You'll see that in a little more detail in just a second. The sides are two by fours, the legs are four by fours, and all of the cross jointed members are also two by fours. They've all been uh, cut down a little bit on each side to just give uh, squared off edges. I'll turn it around here to show you the other side of this, which includes a drawer. This drawer holds pretty much anything, but I use it to hold these little uh, uh, dogs or stop blocks or anything like that for clamping uses. I'll also show you that a little bit later. But the one cool feature and the primary purpose I use this bench for is to accept a saw. So you're going to see this piece of plywood right here is cut out. Now I can take that off and it's got little indicator holes that match up with little pins down here in the drawer. So I can put this in the drawer, put it just like that, and slide it in and set my saw in here. You'll, I'll, I'll also show you putting the saw just so you can see kind of how it all goes together. Nothing fancy with that, just uh, I think I used my 2x4 scraps to make this drawer and a piece of really, really cheap plywood for the bottom. Uh, let me grab the camera, I'll take you around and I'll kind of show you how everything's joined up. Starting from the top, the most obvious feature that you'll notice is the series of 3 quarter inch holes that I have drilled in various locations. The primary purpose is to either hold work pieces to the bench or to add stop blocks or guides for when I'm using the saws. I'll give a little demonstration of that uh, towards the end. Heading on down, the main structure of the bench is all built with either a rabbited style joint or a lap joint like this. I simply used a circular saw to cut lines in there and then I chiseled out to get a nice tight fit. They're not perfect fits, but uh, <laughs> They work for me. So, and then I just finished them out with glue and screws. I have lateral bracing for lateral movement of the bench just to secure it. And then I also have the same type of joints along the legs. Let me give you a little bit better view of it. And from there, let me just give you a quick view of how I connected the sides right underneath the top. You'll notice here is obviously a lot thinner than a normal 2x4, um, but if you look on the bottom, I just cut them also with a circular saw in a rabbit style joint, uh, not routered or anything, just circular saw and chisel, uh, just to provide for a little bit extra connection and a little bit more surface area for the glue to adhere. The next thing you'll notice is that on either side of the workbench, I have these carriage bolt and washer assemblies that extend out from the wood just a bit. And what they do is serve as attachment points for those two pieces of plywood to be used as table extensions or kind of like table leafs that come out for when I'm using the chop saw or the table saw. And to support the table extensions, I've simply added some EMT conduit that fits inside a PVC pipe underneath the bench. And it fits in a little notch down here and then also in a notch on the underside of the table extension. You'll see that in a demonstration in just a bit. 
To supply power to the tools that I'm using on or with the workbench, I've simply added a power strip to the underside of the workbench and mounted it to a flip out shelf so that the power cords are out of the way as well as protected from sawdust and any other things. To release that flip out shelf, I've added a, another piece of that scrap EMT conduit with some brackets and when I pull this, you'll see the, uh, the shelf flip out. Flips out like that, I don't have to bend down to access this, I can plug in whatever I need, fold it back under, hold it there, push that back in and we're good to go. Okay, so you saw pretty much all the basic functions. Now I'm gonna show you the last function, which is a separate clamping uh, shelf and also kind of like a table extension that I'm currently working on, but it's not perfect. So hold on, let me throw it in. And this is the extension. And each of these is a threaded rod that I added a tapped in nut on either side, epoxied a little uh, washer in there, and then just cut a plywood thing so I can use this as a clamping mechanism. And it'll go right through these right here and be able to clamp this whole thing and use it as a clamping platform. And the last two features I've tried to incorporate with the workbench have to do with the top and the holes that I have drilled in the top. Basically, they're areas that I can use to clamp workpieces to the workbench using simple bar clamps like this one, where I can slide one end from the bottom, one end from the top, and then clamp the workpiece down or use it as a stop block. Or I can use simple wooden blocks with three quarter inch dowels that I can place in the workbench in various areas depending on the size of the workpiece and also add them to the clamping section and then just clamping this whole clamping section in to be able to secure whatever workpiece that I'm working on to the whole bench. So that's pretty much it and uh, <laughs> if you have any questions please post them below. Otherwise, um, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got some good ideas and also some other great resources that I have. Um, Ron Polk, he makes a fantastic bench. I think it's called the Ultimate Workbench. Jay Bates has a variation of his bench. 
and uh, <laughs> uh, David Picciuto, um, Jimmy Duresta, all of those guys probably have great uh, tutorials on how to make a great workbench. So as always guys, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.